Well, I think um, we can go ahead and get started now by... Yeah, people will still keep coming in. Um, and I'll introduce our guest speaker today, Juan Cabeza, who lives in Madrid, Spain, and um, began studying piano at the age of nine. He completed a degree in piano performance at the Salamanca Conservatory. And he has worked as an accompanist for several choirs and currently teaches private and group piano at the Katarina Gerska School of Music where he specializes in students at the early age of study. And um, Juan is the author of several books that we just love. And we met him about five or six years ago when Juan um, was introduced to Piano Safari and um, sent us some pieces that he wrote uh, that were wrote or patterned pieces. Um, he said he was inspired by Piano Safari and our approach to write these pieces. Um, and sent them to us just, you know, as a gift. And, and we thought they were wonderful and asked him if we could publish them. And so we distribute his books in the US and Alfred UK distributes them in Europe. Um, so he has written Piano Train Trips and then two books of Diversions, Diversions one and two. And most recently, um, the miniatures, which are sight reading, um, little sight reading pieces that are really great. And then also he has a few um, pieces in our Joy of Christmas 3 book that we have, which Catherine is holding up. I have so, a Christmas theme going here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's just been wonderful to work with Juan and to um, uh, see his pieces and, and how they add to what we're trying to do in Piano Safari. And our, my students all love the, the Piano Train Trips and Diversions pieces. So we're very happy to have Juan with us today to give us a presentation and talk more about his music. So today Juan asks that you would submit any questions you have to him by email. Um, so I'm going to, at the end of the webinar, put that in the chat. Or you can actually post your question in the chat or in our Q&A and we will get those to Juan and he is going to be uh, responding to you with any questions you have. So Let's go ahead. I'm going to turn it over to you, Juan, now. Okay. <laughs> okay, hello, everyone. I am very pleased to be here. And I want to, first of all, I want to thank Julie and Catherine for not only for hosting this webinar, but for publishing my books. As Julie has, has said, has told you, uh, for me, uh, discovering Piano Safari completely changed the way the way I was teaching and because of that I sent to them uh, both of them my, my first book and because they really uh, loved the pieces they wanted to, to publish them the, the book and I was completely uh, uh, amazed with, with that and I didn't believe it I, I, that Piano Safari wanted to publish my, my books so uh, I, as Julie has, has said before, I, I am from Madrid. Well, first, I also want, uh, want to thank everybody who's watching this webinar. And I also apologize, want to apologize because of my English. I hope it won't be a problem. It's going to be a lot of musical examples. So I hope there is no, there is no problem with the, with the webinar. So um, I, I hope you can follow me and, and understand my, my, my way of, of speaking English. I should have studied more English in, when I was a kid. I'm going to share with you uh, my, okay, this is, where is this working? Yes. So, these are my four books published by Piano Safari. Uh, the, first, the first of all was Piano Train Trips, and then they came the two diversions books. And recently, I don't remember, some months ago, uh, Piano Safari also published uh, my miniatures. I'm going to talk about these four books, but I, I want to introduce a little bit by the the reasons I like uh, using pattern in pieces in my in, in my teaching, in not only my pieces but also uh, piano safari 
uh, pieces. I discovered when I discovered some some years ago piano safari the the thing that uh, really changed my way of teaching was the combination of road teaching where with pieces based on patterns and and reading the reading approach the intervallic reading, reading approach and this this was my eureka moment uh, uh, discovering this uh, the students started to not to read uh, note by note, but they read by group of notes and they started to understand better what they were, that they were, what they were playing. So I have included here before I start to talk about my pieces, uh, the things I, why I, I like this, uh, this using of, of pattern based pieces. Uh, using these pieces allows several teaching approaches because you can maybe depending on the strength of the students or or on their weaknesses you can teach a piece a pattern piece perfectly uh, by reading it or you can teach teach it by rote or you can even can do it a, an explanation or you can even you can you can uh, also teach a, a pattern piece very easily with um, a, a, a more ear approach. So you can uh, make some echoes and and so so stuff like this. So you can learn by the score reading or imitation or by rote or or by ear or by an explanation, and this is. Uh, one of the reasons I like teach pattern-based pieces. So it also increases motivations in all students because they really understand the pieces they are playing and they can uh, play a, a pattern-based piece in, in very few minutes. They, they can be doing music with, with the piece and for, for me it's, it's very important because you can do this uh, the, these pieces uh, not only in individual lessons also in group uh, piano lessons you can prepare with the students one piece very easily in very different ways so it also develops creativity because the students understand very well how the pieces are, are built and are composed and they they when they started to to use pattern pieces from the very beginning from with piano safari uh, uh, pieces and they you can uh, improvise with with these pieces with uh, only with two notes or three notes and and then they they can they they uh, they start to, to compose their own pieces from the very beginning or, or improvise and also helps a student to learn more pieces this this is the thing uh, they, they can they, they can practice a lot of pattern pieces but they also can can combine with and maybe more longer or more difficult pieces for maybe a, an exam or a recital or, or a championship or no, I don't know if it's championship the word but they can do this these two two, two different approaches uh, uh, one with with pieces that they really understand everything they are they are playing and one, one, maybe two or three pieces more difficult. And because a student play the music, plays, play the music from the very beginning with pattern pieces, uh, this, this fact uh, encourages their, their flow because, because they are making music and the, the pieces sound very well from the beginning, from the very beginning from the first day. So they wanted to, to study the, the piece, they want to share with their family or friends, and they are used to play the, the pieces from the very beginning to the end of the piece. So they, they learned the, the whole piece in the first day, and, and this, they are uh, playing through the, the whole piece in, in the first lesson. 
Also, uh, allows exploring concepts from different angles. With as we are going to see in this webinar, I used to, I want to share with you some activities I do with my PCs. You can use my PCs as as uh, <clears throat> playing with the score and play play them like like they are written as they are written. Sorry, um. But you can, because you can teach them in several different ways and you can, with the same piece, they can, they can, for example, compare concepts like major versus minor in a pattern piece. You, you can easily change things. And, and students, students uh, learn uh, a lot of this, these concepts if they compare for example, a piece written into four, it's very easy to play in three, four, or maybe it's in legato uh, and you can play it uh, with a staccato or, or you can study the, the pieces from different angles and you can transpose the, the pieces and play it from very different keys. So this is the one of the things I like most, this, this kind of, of pieces and because of all I have mentioned before uh, be, uh, after we work this way with our students uh, we develop complete musicians from because from the very beginning we are working with their ears their improvisation skills their their also their reading uh, the reading skills so I am going to start to talk Talk to you a little bit about uh, my my late book published by Piano Safari Miniatures. Uh, it contains 24 eight measure five finger position pieces in all keys. So uh, they are very short pieces with only one, one motif. So they can they can transpose to other keys very very easily and do a lot of activities with, with these pieces. I'm going to, first of all, I, I want to play for you uh, three pieces of the, this book. And for the people who doesn't know uh, this book, I want to play three for you. This was miniature number two. You can see the, at the top at the right, at top right of the score, you can see the the the, the fingers. Well, the the notes the students are going to play. They are going only to play five notes, the first five, first five notes of the scale, and these are uh, and you have the they have the picture in in the score, so they can uh, easily they can see what keys they have to play. This was the one in C minor, this is F sharp minor. have tried to to include in this book a very different styles and very different rhythm patterns and and methods and, uh, and let me show you this in d flat minor where the left hand is playing the, the melody <laughs> say that this book contains also uh, several cards I have here for uh, in the book. You have to cut them and, and to, to classify it if you want. Uh, I have mine here. Um, uh, for working in the way I am going to show you uh, with the next piece, I am going to play, well, it's, it's for changing keys or changing methods or 
changing from major to minor activities. So I'm going to show you the way I I work with my students with this. I I, I the, the left part of the of the this slide is the is the the piece as it, as it is included in the book. In the in the uh, part of, in the right part of the of the slide, I, I have included the way I I can work with my students. I am going to play it. Well, I'm going to the play the thesis in C major. I am going to play it directly in in D major. You can work with your students in, in the the keys you want to. Uh, you are working with your student at that moment. I'm going to play it in, in D major. This, this is a, one of the things you can do with these pieces. You can play it in, in so many keys you want. You can also change the, the mode of the key. You, you, I have I have included this in C minor. I'm only changing the third note of the piece. It is going to really change everything, the sound, the mood of the piece. I'm going to play it for you. Also, you can change uh, using the cards included in the book, the, the matter. For, for doing this, you, you maybe you are going to need to change, well, maybe not you are going to change, uh, to have to change the rhythm pattern, but it's, it's very simple because it's only a rhythm pattern repeated all the, the whole piece. So, and the accompanying pattern, you can use yeah, I, can, I could have used on, uh, here also chords, but I decided to, to make the left hand accompaniment with, with arpeggios and, and right hand playing the melody in six, in six eights. I am going to play it for you. Safari method, you maybe you have a uh, notice in well, you have worked with, with your student uh, some piano left hand accompaniment for the for your left hand, and I have included here some variations of the piece, including this this these left hand accompaniment patterns uh, are used in Piano Safari, the vals accompaniment. I'm going to play the piece. With, with a vals accompaniment. Also in Piano Safari Book 3, the, uh, uh, another accompaniment is very used, this uh, is Alberti bass. I'm going to play it for you. For you. So in a uh, stride, the accompaniment is in a stride, a very stride manner with big jumps in, in, the, in the left hand. I'm going to play it for you. maybe is working on this piece uh, and maybe they are working in as I said before in a more difficult case and maybe they are 
going to to find in the new score some new difficulties you can introduce these these new difficulties or technical difficulties with a piece they already know how to play and they already understand and it's better to play this this new concepts in pieces that they already know so let's imagine our student has to play a piece that in certain moment have to play two notes uh, in the right hand and or against three, three. no problem so uh, as i was saying it, it may, maybe your student want to start to play your class and maybe you, uh, they can use this this piece they already know to play octaves in with their right hand so uh, you you can also work uh, with this piece. You can change the melody instead of playing the melody with your right hand. You can play the melody with the left hand. I have simplified here the melody in the third bar, in the third measure. So because it, this maybe it's a really it's really difficult for the student, or maybe not. You can do the the melody. Uh, the same as the, if it is written for the right hand or not. It's, it's up to you. I'm going to play it for you. You can do it in several ways. You can play the, your left hand. Uh, the melody with their with your left hand and with your right hand you can change the the chord and play it in the in the next octave i'm going to play it for you <laughs> So the, the last one, uh, you can also change the, the rhythm pattern in, in the chords in your right hand, this way. Ah, no, I, I thought there was the last one. No, maybe this, this piece is always uh, uh, using the G note in the, uh, as a pedal note. Always plays one note and then always goes to G, then one other, another note and there's always goes to G. Well, the last variation of I have written here is uh, changing this, this pedal note. Instead of playing always uh, G, uh, we can play uh, C as a as a pedal note. I'm going to play it for you. So you 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 uh, can work this this piece and the other in the book. Uh, in so many ways as you want in very few minutes if the students know how to play the piece and understand how it, it is built and how it works they can change everything in the no, not everything but the, the things you want to change and maybe you can do this kind of work with the students in only five minutes of the lesson if they are used from the very beginning for, uh, for doing this uh, they can they can play the, the all the variations I have played for you in in five minutes of the lessons I, and we are working on a lot of different uh, elements. We are working with chords, with uh, Alberti bass, with vals, with stride accompaniment, or with different methods. And you can change major to minor, 
or we can change the key very easily. Uh, and you can play the melody in, the, in your left hand and, or in your right hand, or you can work whatever you want. Uh, I usually write a chart like this in, or in the blackboard or in my notebook. I, and I, you can, for example, uh, maybe you can play, uh, for example, I have selected one of these. You can play the piece with your right hand and in, key, in G minor in three four and with a valse accompaniment and let's see if you, if you play the piece for the students let's see if they can circle the correct answers and they they can know you are uh, listening to you and listen, uh, watching to you playing if they can understand if you are playing with the melody with the right hand or if you are in G or in minor uh, or maybe uh, you can ask, ask your student, uh, how do you want to, to play this piece for me? And I make the student uh, uh, select the, their options that they want to play. Or maybe, yes, Catherine? So you, you can also use them uh, with this piece. Some, you, can, you can work with your group lessons or with your individual lessons, uh, students. You can play, change the the pattern of the melody, the rhythm. You can change the the rhythm in the melody. For example, you can sing the one of these patterns, and your student you can sing the first four notes, and your student has to repeat uh, to continue playing the first sec the second phrase of the of the piece and. Also, maybe uh, one student uh, can play one with one of these melodic patterns, and then the other students has to guess what the what was the student playing. So I I, I have recording this yesterday with my adult group lesson. They are three three adults, and let's see how we work with these melodic patterns. I'm going, in the video, you are going to listen to me singing the pattern without, without telling the, the notes, and they have to repeat where, what I, I do. I uh, then, and the other student has to guess uh, in which, uh, what um, uh, measure, uh, Okay, was it in two four or six eight? Six eight. Okay, and which pattern was it? I think it was number nine. Okay. Okay, so Juan, you got Juan, can you make it full screen? A uh, full screen? Yes. There you go. Here, yes. I you can see the whole screen, no? No. Yes. Um, ah, okay. This is another sample. Now we are going to play in D major. Was it in 2 4 or 6 8? In the 4. And which pattern? The 4. Okay, another example. We'll now in A major. Okay, was it in two four or six eight? Two four. Okay, and which pattern? Number two. Okay. So uh, here is another another miniature number five in D major. I'm going to play it for you. I, I hope that this sound problem uh, is already fixed. Okay, we can change the this this miniature. I use I use it for activities for changing the the articulation. Maybe we can change 
and we can play staccato both hands or one hand staccato and the other one legato and I also use it for for talk about intervallic melodic intervallic and harmonic interval 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 harmonic so you can play the piece playing the for example the left hand playing staccato or the right hand legato to play this piece with uh, here are several options maybe you you want to play one hand with melodic intervals and the other one with harmonic ones i'm going to play it in for example in three fourth using a, a me melodic intervals in the left hand and harmonic ones with the right hand Well, I played it in fourth, no, in three fourth. I, okay, so you can do a lot of activities of this kind of activities, and you can also work in the activities we 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 seen we saw before. So I'm going to talk now about my my another three books. I am going to to talk about them together because they are very similar, the, the, the Diversions Book 1, and Book 2, and Piano Train Trips. Uh, these are uh, pattern pieces, as I told, all my pieces are pattern pieces. And, and the pieces used uh, patterns uh, with chords or with arpeggios or using intervals or, or pentascales, scales. So uh, there are pieces in contrary motion, very easy to understand for, for the students. So uh, let me play for you one, one the, the piano train trips also has, has 18 pieces. Uh, the, the pieces in this book are called the stations. I, uh, the, this book also contains nine exercises with uh, chords and, and scales. And, Diversions 1 and Diversions 2 has uh, 21 pieces in each, each book, so there, there are 42 diversions. And book 1 is the, the easiest book of these the three books, is the easiest one. I usually start this book when, when my students are in, in Piano Safari level 2. I start, I start to use uh, Diversions book number 1. You can use Diversions 1 also in uh, while your students are in, in Piano Safari uh, level 1. But I prefer to, because I want to work with my students with the pieces in several ways, I, I prefer to then to play Diversions Book 1 in, in, while they are, they are playing the, the Piano Safari level 2. So let me play some pieces uh, for you, some pieces in, with intervals. This piece is, is composed only using uh, major seconds for the left hand and the right hand. And I'm going to play it. This one is about major second intervals. This one is about perfect fifths intervals. Let me play for you. You 
can, as I told you before, you can use these pieces because they are very easy to understand for the student. Maybe your student knows how to play how to play this this piece, and maybe you want to work with them also maybe fourths, perfect fourths. So I'm going to play a diversion of at least the the beginning of the these diversions using only perfect fourths in both hands. Or maybe you can use use this piece for teaching your students to to form perfect major chords. So maybe uh, your the you can play your your student can play the the left hand as he after. As it is written in in this diversion, but the second, the right hand is going to play a, a major third beginning in in the first bar. For example, it will be a C and E in the second bar, the D flat and F instead of the notes are written here. So this way they can they can uh, know and they can play the the chord the major chords. So you can do the same thing with a, a perfect minor chords or even uh, other intervals, maybe uh, augmented uh, fourth. It's this really sound very harsh, but, but it, if it, 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 this is interesting for to do for the students. This one is is one that that are the, the left hand is playing fifths and the right hand is playing always uh, major thirds and they goes down chromatically. I'm going to play it for you. You can try it uh, with the le your left hand play, playing these fifths, uh, and, but then uh, maybe you can try with your student the left hand instead of playing major thirds. Uh, maybe your student can play minor thirds, and this sounds different, but it's strange, but it's, it is really interesting. So uh, uh, this book, uh, these books also contain some pieces in, in contrary motion, as this one. This is the version number three, and this is the version nine, number 16. Uh, I am going to play it for you in contrary motion. This is with intervals in contrary motion. Maybe you you can work with your student. Maybe they can make up their own diversion sixteen. They can uh, always playing with with contrary motion intervals. Maybe they can they can play this motif. So maybe they make this 
this motif or, or whatever they want. And then you can ask them to repeat this motif again in, in G position. And then uh, you can ask your student if they can play this, this motif, uh, but in, instead of in G position, in, in F position, then you can go back to G position and then you can go an octave higher and repeat this, this uh, motif your student has, has made up so they can create their, their own diversion 16. Okay, the, this is, um, in these books also, uh, I have composed several pieces for teaching chords and arpeggios. And um, this one I use, uh, as you can see in the, in the score, I use always uh, arpeggios in root position, uh, but combining the, the left hand in the first bar, plays the A minor chord in, in root position and left hand in uh, the F major chord in root position. I'm going to play this for you. So you can work with this piece also in very different ways using the same structures, the same chords. You can play them, the chords, uh, instead of far pages, you can play the chords as, as they are written, but all together or combining the two chords. <laughs> Or you can, maybe you can play the, uh, the two chords together in contrary motion, uh, the two arpeggios in contrary motion. It sounds pretty cool. I'm going to play for you the same, the first bars. So I have included, the, for example, this piece. Uh, it's written uh, with all chords uh, in the same position. They are all, all chords written in first position or first inversion. And the hand shape is the same for the entire, entire piece. They can piece the whole, they can play the whole piece with the same hand shape. I'm going to play it for you. Well, there are other other pieces using only this core or th this this piece. I I I don't have much uh, time. I I don't. I'm not going to play this. But this is only using the chords in second in second position, in second inversion in the right hand, and this one combines a chords in broken chords in root position and and broken chords in in second position, in first position. So you can, or you can change it and play it all the, all the broken chords in, for example, all in first position or all of them in second position or inversion. You can make a lot of change, change with these pieces. I, I want to, uh, I'm going to play this, this one. This is, uh, for working pentascales in in your uh, right hand, and it's very 
uh, easy to transpose to other keys. I'm going to play it for you. Using the same notes, you can create your own your own station ten. Is, is the ten one? Yes. Uh, you can you can create your 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 own station with your students. Maybe they 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 only have to to create one melodic pattern and then repeat it and then repeat it in in the in the position and they can. Uh, or a, another time to a position, a minor position, and then they have to play it uh, to one octave higher and two octave higher, and they can create their own own station. This I am going to play this, and and then I'm going to to explain all the all the stations and the verses are, are perfect for doing. Uh, improvisations and, and composition activities. I'm going to play this for you and then I am going to show you a student of mine who has sent me this, this week a piece, uh, her own station four. So in here, oh, first of all, here is several ways to to, uh, to work with your students with a station for uh, all the possibilities you can you can do with your student. Well, there are a lot of ways of playing it. Uh, you can. I'm going to play for you, for example, for because there are these sound problems. I I am going to play all together. For example, I'm going to play with only the first five notes of the scale with the left pattern, pattern number one. Then I'm going to start using left hand pattern number two, then the three and then four. And, and at the very, the, the first two improvisations, I am going to use only the first five notes of the scale and then the whole scale. So I, uh, this way I can, I don't have to stop. And, and, the sound problem. I hope it doesn't appear. You can you can do this all, all kind of activities with your students and here is Lucia my, one of my students and she has created his own station number four
So this was Lucia's station four. Here is some ideas for you. You, um, you can stop the video because the, the video is going to be available on, on YouTube and you can you can try with you or, or your students these these patterns uses using the left hand I used in the piece or the left hand I was using in the improvisations. You can you can do uh, all these the station four uh, with this all of, all of these possibilities. You can, uh, for example, if you choose play the melodic pattern number two, that is is the the same scale. You can repeat the pattern three times and then. Uh, you can create. Uh, you can. You you have to make up a, an ending, and then you you have to repeat the pattern also again. I'm going to play one for you. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe melodic pattern number seven. I am going to play it because it is the scale uh, going ascending and descending. I'm going to play it uh, as you will notice. I'm going to play the pattern three times. And then I'm going to make up a, a brief ending and then I'm going to, to play the pattern another three times and I'm going to make up another ending. try all, all these melodic patterns I suggested here but you can create your own melodic patterns your students can create these melodic patterns and when they when their students create their own music even if it's based on on a piece that when they create uh, their own music they are they are for for them these are a, a fantastic moment because they they learn to create with with all the patterns they are using and the, the good thing using these this pattern pieces is, is later on when the student is, is progressing with their, their piano studies, uh, they are going to find very easy the patterns in Burmuller, for example, or, or in Clementi or, or in Bach, and they can create their, their own pieces based on, on Bach pieces or Chopin pieces. And if you do this from the very beginning, they uh, when they when the day can when they can play these these more difficult pieces, they are going to find the the pattern and they are going to to more easily they are going to understand the, the new pieces and how they are composed and and, they, and also they can they can create their own music and they are going to memorize better the, these more complicated pieces. So this is the last piece I want to talk about. Uh, if, if you see the score, you don't know this, this diversion, uh, is, uh, is from the left hand plays always the, the root of the piece, the, the root of the chord, then the fifth and the seventh. Uh, so the left hand plays uh, root, fifth and seventh note. And um, right hand is playing the third of the chord and the fifth. This is for introducing students the the seventh chords and and the, the how does it sound and how can they play it in in with their with the piano and and the hand shape they they have to use. If you notice, uh, there are only one step exception in measure number I don't know I there is a an A flat because this uh, this is a G G with a ninth no a flat ninth this is the only chord that is not a seventh chord it's it's a seventh chord but plus ninth a flat ninth so uh, if you for example you can use this diversion uh, for work with your to work with your students uh, chord progressions uh, 
you can see at the right uh, the core progressions in the, the of this piece uh, your student doesn't have uh, to know this is a major seventh or a minor seven or a, a flat ninth chord and they they only have to know how to uh, where the chord starts and, and how the chord is built to play it. And then, because the pattern is very easy, they can play the the, the pattern of the first bar. They can play it in very different ways. We are going to to watch my student Pilar playing. First of all, she's going to play uh, the piece as it is written. Then she's going to play this this chord progression of uh, one, six, eight, uh, two, and five. And her mother, because uh, you have a, a student, for example, that plays uh, her son soul, one of them can play this chord progression and the other one can play the melody. And in, in the video, we are going to see, we are going to see how Pilar plays with, with her mother. Then uh, Pilar is going to play the circle of fifths, of descending fifths. So she's going to play C, then F, then D, then E, A, D, G, and, and C. And then if uh, just this, this student of mine uh, was playing Pachelbel's Canon and I asked her to, to play this, this pattern through the Pachelbel's Canon. So let's, let's listen to Pilar. This is the piece. This was the piece, uh, how is it, it, it's written in, in, in the book. Now she's going to play the, this progression, one, six, uh, or sorry, one, six, two, five, and her mother, uh, heart and soul. So uh, also uh, she's going to play now the same pattern but using the circle of descending fifths. So and in this video uh, Pilar is, is playing an improvisation with this piece. She is going to play the three notes in the left hand all together, uh, the, the root, the fifth, and the seventh all together, uh, for, uh, playing chords. And the right hand, uh, if you remember uh, in the piece, uh, uh, the right hand plays the third note of the scale and the, oh, of the chord and the fifth. But in the improvisation, she's going not. She's also going to use the note in between. This this is the note in the piece, but she's going to add the F in between. So she's going to improvise with these three notes, and then with the following three notes, uh, we're going to listen to to Pilar. No, sorry. This is the canon de Pachelbel. Canon, Canon, uh, Canon, Pachelbel's Canon, and this is the improvisation I was talking about.
So this was Pilar playing and I am coming to this. Yes, uh, finally, uh, for ending this webinar, I want to uh, let's imagine our one of our our students is going to play the next lesson uh, a play a uh, a uh, piece in A major. So maybe we can work with uh, maybe our student is is playing uh, the four pieces we are we have worked more more specific here miniature number one miniature number five. Uh, spatial number four and diversion number 21. So maybe our student is playing these four uh, pattern pieces and maybe she's going to, uh, he or she is going to start a new piece in A major. So maybe, um, maybe you can, you can work with your student first uh, before you, you introduce the new piece in A major. You can work with your student playing uh, the four pieces uh, I have talked about, the miniature number one, or miniature number five, also in A major. Maybe you, you want uh, your student to create something with the station number four to improvise something in A major using, using the structure of the station number four. student to play the version number 21 we we saw Pilar playing it in very different ways uh, maybe you want your student to play the version number 21 in, in A major So you can do this, all these activities and improvisation and creativity things with these pieces. Uh, we spending only um, maybe 10 minutes of your lesson and when they start their new pieces in A major, uh, their, their head, their, their ear uh, have make a lot of connections and, and they are going to be more prepared to, to play these, these more difficult pieces. So this is this is all. I am very grateful for all of you that have watched the this webinar. I I, I, so, I am sorry for my English again and for the sound problems, but I hope this this has uh, this is this has been useful for you, and and maybe you 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 can use these ideas with my with my pieces or with with other pattern pieces you can this is the 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 thing i like most the pattern pieces you can use is use them in very very different ways and and it, 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 it they are going to really uh, make your student understand music and enjoy music uh, a lot a lot more see if you work with these kind of pattern pieces so thank you, Julie and Catherine. Thank for you so much. You. Yes, um, I feel like I just learned so much from listening to you um, speak about how you use your pieces. Yes. I love these, um, especially for, you know, I've used them with students who have come to me at a later stage and maybe have never learned to transpose or never learned to look for patterns, even though they're, though they're more advanced in their reading. And this has been such a wonderful bridge for them to start that kind of training because the music is so satisfying and sounds um, so pleasing to play. And um, I love your ideas about all your variations and ways to manipulate it 
um, even more than is suggested on the page. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. And thank you. Thank you everyone for attending too. And yes, sorry about the sound problems and thank you for sticking with us. Juan, yes. what you did, it seemed to fix it perfectly. So yes. <laughs> it, it, it's a good thing Elisa was, was here because I don't know much about computers, so she can fix it. We'll have to get um, information on that so uh, Julie and I can fix these things later too. We'll, we'll learn from you. Um, really quickly, we just had an easy question. Are there digital versions of these books? Um, yes, we have digital versions of the books on our website. And I believe Juan, you also have um, digital versions of the books on your website. Correct. And in, 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 I think in the piano train trips and diversions, they are not available in in my website in in PDF. I or or I don't remember. <laughs> I because in I in English I say in English in Spanish in Spanish they are available in Spanish. Yes. Yeah. So on the piano safari website, if you would like them in English, um, you can find them all there, and. Um, just, I think this is a quick question about when, a, when would a student start piano train trips after finishing piano safari level three? I, I, I start using piano train trips while they are in, in piano safari level three. This is a perfect moment to introduce uh, my, my thesis. I usually start diversions book one with piano safari level two. And piano train trips and diversions too. I usually start with this thesis in in piano safari level three, and and the ne the next level and the four. If there were a piano safari level four, I I were using this thesis this this year. Thank you. That is very helpful. And um, we do get lots of questions about how to incorporate them and when to incorporate them. Um, and as I said, also even if your student is beyond the piano safari level three. Um, stage, uh, they can still be used for many reasons, like to teach improvisation and to teach, um, you know, even early ideas about composing, like as you shared with us. So, and also, I think if you have a transfer student mm -hmm. that uh, uh, playing maybe Burmuller's pieces or Bach minuets or something like that, but maybe they haven't done this work before. This this book we're going to are going to to work very well with them because they pr probably they were never exposed to this kind of work so you can work with them even if they have they are not your students from the very beginning this is perfect for transfer students. Yes, I agree with that. Wonderful. Well, um, again, let's see. I'm going to put Juan's contact here in the chat. For everybody. So if you have any follow-up questions for him, please feel free to email him there. Um, and I will also look through of uh, the chat transcript in the Q&A um, and send those to Juan. Here. So thank you all again today for joining us and we hope you enjoy um, the rest of your Saturday. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Bye.